Today I want to talk to you about the sub-requests project for Node.js. I've talked about this project um, in other occasions for Drupal and in fact if you go to, to, go to sub-requests you will see that there is a Drupal project for it and there is even an article about it. This article uh, may be using Drupal as an example, but it is very relevant uh, because it describes the same procedures that you will use with a Node.js project. So you can use the sub request project with Drupal and Node.js. And uh, in this article, I explain what you need to what you need to know. Uh, just go to lullabot.com and search for the word uh, sub requests, and you will find the article. Um, but let me walk with you with an example of, an ex of a sub-request project that is built on top of uh, Express. So Express is a very popular Node.js server solution and it's uh, often used for projects that are building RESTful APIs or even GraphQL APIs. So imagine that you have a RESTful API and you want to make relational data uh, to come back as a single response uh, but the api that you have to deal with is not quite there so how do you do that if you don't have a, a maybe a json api um, response or uh, maybe you don't have a graphql or even if you do uh, how do you create multiple uh, multiple things in one in one single request because that's not in the JSON API uh, specification or even GraphQL mutations can have to be tailored manually and kind of be specified from the from the consumer so for all that you can use sub requests uh, because it can make any number of sub requests or HTTP requests and you can specify how to make them in a single go. And you, what you need to do is to specify a blueprint of requests, basically a JSON document that describes the, the request that you're gonna make. So how do we do that? Um, I want to walk with you with an example that I made. So uh, go to github.com, eoipso, and then sub-request-express-example. Uh, or just uh, search in the in the repositories under my username and uh, you will find this and basically it's uh, an express application with a MySQL database and uh, basically what you do is uh, just uh, follow the instructions so first we need to uh, clone the repo and I'm gonna do that so I'm gonna do git clone and then this then we're gonna do CD this. Okay, so we here we do ls. You'll find that there is a table SQL and dump SQL. So uh, we go to the instructions. Uh, we need to first create a test MySQL database in our SQL Server. And I already did this, but I'm gonna just delete it for. Uh, delete database so I, I'm gonna start from scratch so first I'm gonna create a database uh, add a database test and I'm using SQL Pro for Mac but you can use whatever maybe the MySQL command line or uh, whatever you need um, so next I need to import the tables structure and I'm going to do import and uh, import Cloned this in here, tables SQL, All right? It creates my customer and my user. And you will see uh, in the structure for the table that the customer has some information, but it defers all the user information to the user table. And uh, we connect this with user ID. And in here we have the name, last name, and we have the GitHub handle, because uh, that's something that our application needs. Um, this is just a test, uh, sorry, this is just an example and you should actually not follow it as a recommendation on how to build a RESTful API using Express. Um, next, we need to import some actual test data. Uh, so I'm gonna import the dump file. 
All right. So if I go to content, uh, there is some data in here, and uh, this is the customer info, and this is the, the user info. All right. Uh, so right on. Next, uh, what we need to do, sorry, what we need to do is to make sure that our db.js contains uh, our username and password. Uh, so I'm going to do sublime here and then db.js. Uh, this is actual, actually my uh, SQL username and password in my local. Uh, I have no problem sharing that because, uh, you know, there's only test data in there. Um, so that's it uh, for the setup. So uh, we're going to just uh, proceed and install using npm. npm install. Install. And it's going to download all the dependencies. And then after that, we just need to do npm start. And uh, that's it. Uh, it says that it's listening in this uh, URL. So I'm going to copy this here into Postman. Postman is the uh, HTTP client that I use to uh, test my my API backends. Uh, this is just a tool that makes uh, that makes some requests. So I'm going to paste this and I'm going to go to customer. So when I send that, uh, you can see that you get a list of all of the of the customers that we have uh, and if we want more information we can always go to user and then the id and you know it takes you to the user object uh, so yeah that's nice uh what we want to do next is uh we want to be able to get all the information in a single request, all the information of our customers, um, and also the information of the users. Oops, of the users, and then I only I also want to get some information from the their GitHub. Uh, repository, sorry, the GitHub profile. So I'm gonna make two internal requests and then one request that is external. You have to notice that uh, if you wanted to do that from the client side without using sub requests, you would need to do customer and then wait for the request to go to the server, compile information and go back to you and then gather the user IDs and do user slash two, one, three, make all these in parallel, wait for all those that went in parallel to come back, and for each one of those, for each one of those, uh, we would need to go and make the request to, to GitHub, to the external API, to uh, deliver the information about each one of these users. So, it takes a bunch of requests to do that uh, without sub requests. So what we are going to do instead is uh, we are going to uh, use what is uh, called a sub request blueprint. So basically you set up sub requests and it will tell you, it will create a route. Uh, we will specify this route and you will see how in, in a minute. Uh, and what we will say is uh, first make a request. The first request that you're going to make is to slash customer. Um, and it knows what server to make this request because if you don't add the full, fully qualified domain name here, um, then it assumes that it's the same that you are making uh, the sub request call. So it's going to do customer and then for each customer it's going to look into the body of the customer's response so this is the request id so it's going to say okay for this second request you need to wait for customers to to resolve and this is going to wait on the server side so it's not going to have to come back to you so you can go back to the server with the new information it's just going to have all there and you're going to save a ton of um a ton of uh, 
round trips uh, to, to the server. So basically, here, what you're saying, you're specifying the document that you want to execute a JSON path expression on. And I will invite you to look at the JSON path specification. Uh, it's an alternative, or it's the JSON variation of XPath, if you're familiar with that one. So what this says is uh, take whatever is in the body, and then from the root element, uh, go for each one of those, so for each one of the customers, and take the user ID property, and then uh, replace these for the actual value of the user ID. So it will be one, two, or three, or four, whatever. So it's gonna make for each one of the result values on the customer, it's gonna make one request and it's gonna replace the value for the actual ID. So it's gonna make one of this, which is gonna return with five customers. Then it's gonna be make five of this, and then uh, we are saying that wait for the users to come back because we need the GitHub handle from the user request. And for each one of the users, make a request to github.com slash users and then the user handle. And uh, we need to specify a header for these GitHub requests because uh, that's what GitHub requires you. If you don't include this, then it's gonna fail. And uh, once we do this, uh, we're gonna see that we get all the information back in one single request. And more importantly, we will be able to cache that. And uh, we're only going to be uh, needing to make this request once and get all the results uh, instantly from the uh, from the client cache uh, if we need to. So. Uh, very big boost in performance. So let's uh, let's go and see what it, what does it take to create this sub request and uh, get all this uh, installed. So I have a bunch of tags here in the code. Uh, sorry, git tag to show you. So uh, I'm gonna first check out this tag and I'm gonna show you the the code that I'm having here. And basically uh, what this is uh, doing is just, uh, it's just creating a bunch of, uh, a bunch of routes with users and customers. And you can see here, uh, this is just standard express uh, development. Uh, you create a get route and uh, the post put uh, exact etc so you can actually create customers and the same for users uh, so up to this point we only have an API and we don't really uh, do any of the sub request stuff uh, everything that you, we're gonna do is gonna live inside of this index.js and let me make this a little bit bigger so everything is gonna be in here so um, Let's move on to the next task because uh, uh, there is nothing sub request specific in here. So I'm gonna just get to check out this. And uh, in here we are configuring, installing and configuring sub requests. So basically what, uh, what this did is in package.json, uh, I installed uh, these three I'm only using this two right now at this moment, and we'll see what this one is for later. So the sub requests and the sub request express, because you can use sub requests outside of express. You can use sub requests uh, raw. So um, uh, yeah, so uh, we installed those, and in here we require from sub request express the sub request factory, the router factory. And basically what we do is we just use the factory and we specify the path that we want. So remember that here we were hitting sub requests slash sub requests. Uh, we can change that here by, I don't know, request aggregator, whatever. Uh, this is just, uh, this is just the path that we want to use. I like sub requests because it's, it, kind of makes sense for me. So that's that's really it. Uh, with this change right now, 
you already have a, a request aggregator that you can use. And I'm gonna remove the node modules just to make sure install again with the uh, actual dependencies that I have at this point uh, in the code in this commit specifically. So, oops, and npm start. So again, it starts here and uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and send this request uh, with this blueprint and see what happens. So the first thing that we're gonna notice is that it takes uh, a little bit of time, uh, 1.2, 1 1.3 seconds. Uh, but remember that this is making a bunch of requests to GitHub. So um, it kind of makes sense. You will see, immediately see that the status is multi-status because some of them may uh, do a 200 error, uh, status code, sorry. Uh, or they may error out with 404 or whatever. So, uh, the status of the aggregate call is 207, but each one of those can have different statuses. Uh, so the first request to customers, uh, it returns a collection of customers. Um, and if I open Sublime here and say JSON, and then pretty print, you will see that uh, it is actually uh, the information that we were ex expecting. So the customer's information, and then uh, it has, for each one of the users, it has, uh, sorry, for each one of the customers, it has a user's call, the, uh, starting from zero, one, two, three, four, and and that's it, five there. So zero to four, that's five requests. And you can see that there is the information about the uh, the user and then uh, we will have five requests to github and um, you can see that the request to to github contains a bunch of information um, let me uh, get this one so i don't show the actual information on other users but i use my information um, all right, so uh, yeah, it makes uh, a call to to GitHub and gives you this public uh, this public information uh, from from GitHub. So that's that's it. Uh, we made all of this. Uh, it returned very fast, uh, provided that we're making external requests uh, to another server. But uh, just remember that server-to-server -server communications are going to be faster than server-to-client communications. Uh, it may be fast uh, in a connection, in a very good connection, uh, maybe in a city or uh, somewhere with a very high bandwidth, uh, but you can never know where the client is going to sit. Uh, maybe they are requesting your service from a cell phone in under 3G. So that painful round trip, you want to make it once and have several requests issue the server to server communications so it's fast and then return back in the in the slow channel uh, to to that phone using 3G. Uh, but this is not really very user friendly so because it this uses um, a multi part uh, related uh, kind of response, but if you want to have all of these structured as a single JSON document, you can do that. And uh, that's when you will use the the last part, git code master. And that's when you will use the um, sub request JSON merger. So it's going to merge all of the responses the 11 responses that we're going to get back in a, in a JSON document. So just do that same dance again, remove and npm install. All right, and then npm start. And I'm going to show you the, the code changes that uh, I had to make to use the, the the JSON merger. So 
we require it as a JSON response. And then we just uh, make sure that we apply a middleware. Uh, this is kind of a, a very standard uh, express thing, this middleware, uh, you pass this and you just set this variable inside of the request and this is going to be picked up by sub requests and it's going to know how to use this to, instead of doing whatever, use a JSON response. So you can see that by doing this, you can actually create a merger yourself if you want. If JSON or multipart related is not good for you, you can write your own merger. Just make sure to uh, put it inside of this uh, inside of this variable on the request object, and then the sub request project is going to use it. So let's try that out. You will see that uh, right now all the code necessary to do uh, to do the aggregation is this. So just Add the middleware, and then use the use the actual sub request project on whatever route you want. In this case, slash sub requests. So uh, that's pretty cool. Let's see if uh, how this changes. Because I said that this is going to become a JSON document. If I send this again, uh, it's going to return back uh, roughly around the same time. So uh, this seems pretty stable response time. And you can see that uh, this are keyed now by the customers, sorry, by the request ID that we gave. So uh, there's gonna be a GitHub's users and customers. So the first one, oops, let me scroll down. It's gonna be customers, then users for the uh, URI replacement number zero, the one, two, three, four, oops. Uh, not sure what I did. There, ah, scrolled up. Sorry. Four, and then a GitHub zero, one, two, three, and four. And I don't know why it keeps scrolling. Um, that's annoying. Uh, but yeah, you can see that you have all the requests, uh, all the information in a single request. And then now it's the time of the client to get all the information that you got back from the. Uh, from the client, sorry, from the server, uh, parse this out, get the body, uh, do a JSON.parse, and uh, whenever, or whatever uh, the technology that you're using, this example uses Express, but uh, you could implement this in, in whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's the whole idea, to improve your decoupled performance and make a relational API, uh, kind of uh, following the principles that JSON API follows or GraphQL, uh, but uh, without having to do all of that work. And uh, this is kind of a, a little bit more flexible in many scenarios because uh, this is just making replacements uh, of things that uh, you know that are going to come back in response. So in, imagine that your RESTful API is uh, already making use of uh, hyperlinks. And you, then you could actually follow the hyperlinks in there in a sing, single request. So I uh, make a, a request to an entry point and then I uh, tell, okay, I know that this, inside this property, there is a, a hyperlink that is gonna uh, make an API call to this other thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, yeah, uh, make sure that you also check that article that I mentioned and go to the sub requests uh, project. Uh, in here, uh, there is um, a specification uh, document uh, somewhere, uh, probably. Uh, I've, I forgot where the, uh, the specification document is, uh, maybe in the Drupal project. Sub requests, uh, hang on a sec. Browse code repository. All right, so yeah, it's in it's in here. Uh, so make sure that uh, if you want to know more, uh, you read this. It's going to explain you all the uh, all the things that you can do with sub requests and. Uh, you know, if you feel like it, you can implement the sub request specification in other languages. Right now we have uh, Drupal and uh, we have JavaScript, uh, namely Node. Uh, 
and we also have these helpers for Express because it's so popular. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this.